Good morning, family. Welcome to First Baptist Bolingbrook. Pastor Vaughn, I'm the first, uh, lead teaching pastor here at uh, First Baptist Bolingbrook, and I'm excited for you to join us here again in our pandemic uh, edition. Um, I hope you're enjoying your time and um, everybody is still uh, have their sanity intact. All of your family members are still alive and not uh, shut up in any rooms. But um, I'm happy that for you guys to join us even via our live stream. Uh, worship is just so important. Um, we were made to worship. And believe it or not, whether you're here in the sanctuary or not, um, we're always worshiping. And what we need to remember at this time is what is it that we're worshiping? Who is it that we're worshiping? And in these times and struggles, it's really important to remember that as we go on. We don't want to make food our God. We don't want to make uh, even our family our God. Um, we want to make God, God. And so I just want to make sure that we're coming together even virtually so that we can worship our Lord and Savior, that we can thank God for his goodness and his mercy, even through this strife and this crisis, that we can still come together and worship together in spirit. And that's why we're here, and I hope we can continue to do that. Uh, as we get started today, just a couple announcements. Um, last week, we had our first virtual prayer service. And um, I, I think it went as well as I hoped it would. Some people had some challenges getting connected, but we're going to try this again um, with a program called Zoom. You can log in via your mobile phone or your computer, or you can dial a conference line in order to connect and just listen to the audio only. But it was nice to connect um, and see faces on our video screens from the mobile phones or from the computers, and for us to corporately come together and, and still pray for one another and with one another. So we'll be doing that on Wednesday at 6.30. Also, uh, we're trying to put together some uh, virtual Bible studies. We'll do the, the same thing there using the Zoom software program for us to get together. Um, and if you have a mobile phone, a smartphone, you can join. We can see your faces. We can have some dialogue and really still saturate ourselves with God's word. So be on the lookout for our weekly events as that comes out on tomorrow so you can know how to join those things as we, we continue. Another thing I want to bring to your attention is offering. Offering is a part of our worship. Not only do we come here and do we sing songs and we hear the scripture being proclaimed and um, we pray with one another, one of those other things that we do together is offering to God. Everything that we have is from God. He's given it to us through his grace, through his mercy. Everything that we have, we owe thanks to him and we need to give back. We need to give back to him. The ministry still continues to go. There are people who have lost their jobs, who are hourly and are not able to go to work, the people that are not able to get food, the people are not able to get the, the needs that they really need and desire in this time. This is the time where the, our community needs the church. And with the way we're able to do that is through your gifts and offerings. So I can't stress this enough. The ministry still needs to continue. And so I urge you to continue to uh, give your offering as you would. You can go to our website. If you scroll down to give online, you can give online via um, your checking account or credit card, debit card. You can do it that way. Or you can uh, put your check in the mail or um, Nancy, our secretary, is here during the week to check the mail and things of that nature. You can feel free if you need to get out of the house. Why don't you put your check in an envelope, drop it in the mailbox during the hours that Nancy is here, and she can take those for you. Uh, so that I can't stress that enough that we need to continue on that discipline of giving our offering as we continue on. So let me pray uh, for our offering that, that God will continue to, to show you his, his grace and his blessing upon your life and you can search in your heart what God puts his on your heart and what, what your offering would be and we pray for those things right now. And Heavenly Father, thank you um, for your continued provision. Father, thank you for your continued mercy. Even through these difficult times where um, things are different, it's unprecedented uh, what we are experiencing right now, but what we know is true 
It is none of this is a surprise to you. None of this is unprecedented for you. Uh, you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And Father, we trust you in your continued provision for us in our lives. We trust you to continue to uh, keep us and, and, and bring us through even this particular time or any other time. You have shown yourself true and faithful throughout the annals of time, all the way from the very beginning when you spoke and the universe leapt into existence. You have um, treated and, and loved your people. Father, we continue to look to you for that as well. Um, help us to remember that um, the work of the ministry needs to continue. Father God, you have told us that we should go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations. Father, help us to take that to heart, and that mission should not stop. Help us to look out to our community and understand and see what it is that you would have us to do, how you would have us to support them and serve our community in this trying time, not for our own selves, not so that we can say, look how good I am, but we can say, look how good God is. Help us to do that, Father. Mobilize your people so that your name will be, complained, to be uh, proclaimed, that you would be glorified in all of these things. Father, we thank you for all this. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, I want you all, uh, even though you're at home, maybe you put on your suit today or maybe you're still in your pajamas, but I want you to stand, just like we would do here in this, the sanctuary. Please stand and let us begin our worship through song.
is to let our prayer today that we would be able to see our Lord, see him high and lifted up, shining in the light of his glory. Wow, um, what a great reminder that is for us here today. Um, turn with me in your copy of God's Word to uh, the Gospel of Mark. We're going to continue our series here in uh, chapter 4 of the Gospel of Mark. Um, we'll be in verses 1 through 20. Um, Gospel of Mark 1 through 20 here this morning. Um, this is entitled, Can You Hear Me Now? If you were um, of a certain age, maybe you remember, um, uh, I think it was a Sprint commercial or whatever, the mobile phone commercial. Uh, you saw the guy walking around and, and he would pick up the phone and says, hey, can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Good. Because apparently, I guess you could hear other people on other mobile carriers. <laughs> um, I think it was Verizon, and now that guy is on a Sprint or whatever the case is. But it's interesting when you think about um, our the, how we communicate to one another. When we think about just talking to each other, I don't know how often this happens for you or you've noticed this in, in others, but sometimes instead of listening to people as they're speaking, sometimes we're so preoccupied with what our response is going to be that while they're talking to us, we're already formulating how they're wrong or maybe how they're right, or maybe just how we want to agree and jump in, or maybe we have a story that we want to share, but unfortunately, because we're having all this stuff going on in our heads, we don't really hear everything that that person is saying. You know, so that, that conversation tends to be one-sided, and we, we lose some context, because we think we know where that person is going, but we're formulating all this stuff in our heads, and we don't really hear what they're actually saying. That's how a lot of misunderstandings and disagreements come into play. Because we're so busy thinking about ourselves that we don't take the time to hear. We're already, already thinking about how we're going to be heard. Jesus does something interesting here in our text this morning, and he makes it very clear. He's like, hey, I understand that you guys are coming from different perspectives. I understand that you guys have your own idea on what is what. Those who have ears to hear, listen. And but not everybody had ears to hear. Not then and not today. So that's our question today. Can, can you hear him now? And what does that look like for you in your life? Look in the Gospel of Mark. We'll be in chapter 4 again, starting here in verse 1. Here God's word reads, Again he began to teach beside the sea, and a very large crowd gathered around him, so that he got into a boat and sat in on the sea, and the whole crowd was beside the sea on the land. And he was teaching them many things in parables. And his teaching, he said to them, Listen, behold, a sower went out to sow. And he sowed. Some seed fell along the path, and birds came and devoured it. Other seed fell on rocky ground, where it did not have much soil, and immediately it sprang up, since it had no depth of soil. And when the sun rose, it was scorched, and since it had no root, it withered away. Other seed fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no grain. And other seed fell into good soil and produced grain, growing up and increasing and yielding thirtyfold and sixtyfold and a hundredfold. And he said, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. And when he was alone, those around him with the twelve asked him about the parables. And he said to them, To you has been given the secret of the kingdom of God. 
But for those outside, everything is in parables, so that they may indeed see but not perceive, and may indeed hear but not understand. At least they should turn and be forgiven. And he said to them, Do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all parables? The sower sows the word, and those are the ones along the path where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan immediately comes and takes away the word that is sown in them. And these are the ones sown on rocky ground. The ones who, when they hear the word, immediately receive it with joy. And they have no root in them themselves, but endure for a while. Then, when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately they fall away. And others are the ones sown among the thorns. They are those who hear the word, but the cares of the world and deceitfulness of riches and the desires of other things enter in and choke the word, and it proves unfruitful. But those that were sown on good soil are the ones who hear the word and accept it and bear fruit thirtyfold and sixtyfold and hundredfold. Would you all join me in prayer at this time? Uh, my God, we, we come humbly before you today uh, with thanksgiving in our hearts, thinking about all the things that you have done for us. But right now, in this very moment, Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for speaking to us through your word. We thank you for preserving it for us on days just like today. Father, we just ask that you um, clear our minds and hearts of everything else that is going on and you help us to get laser focus on what you would have us here today. Give us ears to hear directly from your word. Father, hide me behind the cross so people might see more of you and less of me this morning. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. My Lord, my strength, and my Redeemer, in whom I trust. It's in Jesus' name I pray this. Amen. Here again in the Gospel of Matthew, we encounter, or the Gospel of Mark, excuse me, we encounter Jesus still on his earthly mission He's, he's had an emotional day. His mothers and brothers have come and taken him away because they know he's being bombarded um, with everything that is coming. And they want to take him back to Nazareth to protect him. The, then the scribes accuse him of being aligned with Beelzebub, who uh, this is the, the unforgivable sin that we've talked about before. Then lastly, Jesus proclaims that the true mother and brothers, his true family members, are not his earthly family, but whoever does the will of God. That is the true family of God. Now Jesus goes down to the seashore to preach. And the crowd is so expansive uh, that he has to go out, not just, he, he can't stand, there's no stage out, but what he does is he goes out to a boat and he goes out in the middle of the sea and so that he, uh, people can see and hear uh, what is going on. Jesus looks out into the crowd and he recognizes the diversity of everyone who is in attendance. There's lots of different backgrounds and ethnicities and, and dialects and things of that nature. So some of these people who were believers and some who still had the mystery of the kingdom being worked out in their lives. Some were coming to faith while others were still hardening their hearts. They just came to have a miracle done for them. Some were coming to faith. Some uh, uh, were, were uh, coming for other reasons. But Jesus wanted them all to listen with receptive hearts. He decides to speak to them in parables so that if they listen and if they meditated on it, their lives would be changed. Again, going back to uh, the explanation of just our normal communication, when we're talking to people and they say something that's outlandish, we're, we're so in the mode and we're ready to respond, and then they say something crazy, you're like, wait, what? What did you say? 
Jesus wants to slow people down and he gives them these parables. He wants to stimulate some thinking and cause the hearer to contemplate what they are hearing. Parables, they use this, these everyday objects, events, and circumstances to illustrate a spiritual truth. And it usually has a different twist that, that comes on. I love how uh, Jesus uh, teaches and he, he really takes these things and, and hammers them home. If we look at the totality of Jesus' teachings, what we find is about 35% of his time is, is taught using parables to reveal the truth of, for those who had receptive ears. Verses 3 through 8 of chapter 4 is what is commonly known as the parable of the sower, or um, even better, the, the parable of the soils. If you know anything about me, you know that I'm not an outdoor person. I am allergic to the outside. I don't go hiking. I don't um, go out and do any of those walking around in the neighborhood. I've never been camping. It's just not something that is, is, is for me. So uh, I, I obviously don't know anything about farming. But because of the, the tools that I have at my ex expense using Wikipedia, doing some research, I found out there's a, a thing, there's a thing that is called broadcast seeding. This is a farming term, this broadcast seeding. This is a type of seeding that involves scattering the seed either by hand or mechanically over a large area. So this broadcast seeding, you're just throwing out seed, again, either mechanically or by hand. And, um, imagine today this is done massively through uh, machines. But this broadcast seeding is very different from what is called precision seeding. And this precision seeding is where um, it, 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 the seed is placed in specific areas in precise spacing. So you have the area that you want to seed, uh, that, uh, where you want your crops to grow, and you put it in those exact areas as opposed to the broadcast seeding where you just throw it. And, and then there's another called hydro seeding that's a mixture of seed, mulch, and water, and it's sprayed over an uh, area that is prepared. This is ground that is prepared in a uniform layer so again, it would uh, be more receptive. This also is different from broadcast seeding. What Jesus is talking about is this broadcast seeding, where you're throwing the seed and it's landing in different areas. These areas may or may not be prepared. They might not be receptive to the seed. Jesus uses this example this agricultural example to these people who do this every day, unlike me. They are able to understand instantly where he's going and what this means. They would say, well, of course you wouldn't put seed where there are thorns. Of course you wouldn't put seeds along the, the path. They know what happens to those seeds. So when they heard this, they, they understand the difference in, in growth and depend on uh, the, the various types of soils within it. So Jesus describes the type of soil. He talks about the, the path, the rocky ground, the soil with, with thorns, and even the good productive soil. The seed is a symbol of God's word. And every seed is filled with life. The sower is Christ. And it is also people who proclaim the word of God. The people who share the gospel. These are the sowers. The path represents people who are hard-hearted or tough-minded people. The word comes to them and they immediately, as soon as they hear it, Satan snatches it away. They're resistant, they're unresponsive, they're skeptics, and they dismiss the word without even giving a careful consideration. They just brush it off as, 
made up stories or figments of mag imagination. For whatever reason, they're hardened to the gospel and have can completely closed their ears and hearts. The next soil is more welcoming, but not enough to maintain growth or of the seed. That these people hear the word and they receive it rejoice with joy. Uh, praise God, right? People who receive the word with joy, we, we long for that. We want to see that happen amongst our people, but they endure for a while. They may even show some signs of spiritual maturity, but unfortunately they're shallow because they have no roots. So when tribulation or persecution comes, like the hot sun, they fall away. They give it up. When things are good, things are going well, they're, they're going out and talking about how great God is or maybe how great their life is. But as soon as things get a little hard, they have a different story. They're gung-ho when times are good, but when depression or job loss or COVID-19 comes, they lose hope. Look with me in verse 18. Others are one sown among the thorns. They are those who hear the word, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches and desires for other things enter in and choke the word and it proves unfruitful. This group receives the word as well. Again, praise God for people receiving the word, but understand what that looks like. Even better than the first two, they uh, receive the word, but even still, the, the, they end up getting distracted. For them, this, this life, this, this current life, things that are going on, is more important to them than the time or the life yet to come. These, this group of people, they're, they're more interested in, in stuff as opposed to uh, what's important to the Savior. John chapter 8, verse 31. It says, so, so Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, he, he says this, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. See, the difficult part about this is that these people, they look and they act like genuine believers in Christ. The people that were amongst every day, every, every week. They are active in our churches. They are active in ministry. They are active in charity. They are active in our communities. But the unfortunate reality is they are false disciples. There's no real surrender to Christ as Lord. They find more pleasure in money instead of Christ. They find more pleasure in their cravings than the Creator. Even good things like family or church programs like VBS and Awana can be idols that, put, uh, that we put above Christ who has charged us to, to go and make disciples. Even good things like that can be put higher than Christ himself. So what does good look like? What is this text telling us? Where ought we be? What should we be striving for? Verse 20. Those that were sown on good soil are the ones who bear the word and accept it. And they bear fruit, but not just bearing fruit, not just one fruit, but they, they bear fruit that is 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold. This, this is what the people of God ought to look like. Those that are sown on good soil. This soil is, is very different than those we have already discussed. This soil represents the people that hear the word 
They accept the word and they bear fruit. They're unmoved by tribulation. They're unmoved by persecution. They're unmoved by struggle. They're unmoved by distraction. They're not distracted by personal desires, wealth, status, or sinful cravings. Not only do they hear the word, but it is active in their lives. They pursue God's word. They just can't get enough. These are the folks that, that when they're free time, when they're home, they are in the word. They are in the Bible. When you talk to them, they can't help but, but recite verses that they've read that have pierced their heart, pierced their soul. It is just running through them like water. They love and pour over the prophets just as much as they do the Gospels. The entire word. They allow the word of God to take root and then they rejoice in the growth. Growth is the key. These Christians bear fruit and they multiply themselves 30, 60, 100 times. This is the Great Commission. This should sound familiar to us. Go and make disciples of all the nations, teaching them all the things I have commanded you. This should sound familiar. Failure to do this, failure to do the Great Commission, proves that the word or the seed has not sown on fertile ground. If the word is not active in your life, that should be telling. A fruitless Christian is an oxymoron. It doesn't compute. It doesn't make sense. A fruitless Christian, a, a non-disciple-making Christian doesn't exist. It doesn't make sense. John chapter 15, verse 5. Jesus says, I am the vine. You are the branches. Whoever abides in me, I in him. He it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Jesus speaking, he says, apart from me, you can do nothing. If you're not growing, if you're not producing fruit, you, you have to ask yourself this question. Are you connected to the vine? If you are stagnant in your spiritual life, if you are not producing, if you don't long for God's word, if you don't long to be with God's people, if you don't have your heart broken for your community, you have to ask yourself this question. Are you connected to the vine? Are you connected to Jesus? If you're not producing anything, that points directly to the power that you're plugged into. It says, apart from me, you can do nothing. You're unplugged. There's no power. So what do we do? What do you do, preacher? Now you brought us down. What do we do? I'm glad you asked. Jesus says we can do nothing apart from being connected to him. If you remember, when we talked in Mark chapter 3, verse 35, it says, whoever does the will of God, he is my brother and my sister and my mother. He who does the will of God those are the people that are in the family of Christ who have been grafted in 
to this relationship. What Jesus is asking you to do is to tune into God's word instead of tuning out. Some of you have extra time on your hands at home. Pick up God's word. Allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you. And think carefully before dismissing Jesus' words. Because within all this is a warning. Hearing God's word is dangerous. And what you do with it is critical to your soul. If you hear God's word and you don't abide in it, you don't uh, obey it, you don't do what the word says, that is a detriment to you. Because you know better. You've heard it. You've seen it. You've read it. In this season, we've got people being greedy and Hoarding all types of things, hoarding toilet paper and hand sanitizer and things of the nature. I'm here to tell you today what you need to be greedy with, what you need to be hoarding is God's word in your heart. That's what we should be hoarding. The shelves should be empty of the, any Bibles that are available. We should be going and, and sucking those things up and hiding them in our hearts. Go after it. Grab hold of it. Don't let go. Uh, those things will only cleanse the outside. This, this toilet paper, this hand sanitizer, the, the soap, and you can get all that you want. It only cleans the outside. But the Word of God, it cleanses your soul. It makes you clean from the inside out. It transforms who you are and what you're doing. Psalm 51. Psalm 51 and 10. <laughs> clean, create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew in me a right spirit. Cast me not away from your parent presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with the willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from blood guiltness, O God, O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Create in me a clean heart. Renewing me a right spirit. That is my prayer for us today. As we look at the different soils that they are, that we are preparing the ground, that we're preparing the soil to be receptive to God's word, the seed. And my prayer, my prayer for each and every one of you as I go through our membership roles and I pray for you on a daily basis is that you would be good soil, that you would receive this good seed and that you would produce fruit, not just little fruit, but 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold. That the village of Bolingbrook will know the name of Jesus that the state of Illinois would know the name of Jesus. The United States would know the name of Jesus. And this world would know the name of Jesus. Can you hear him now? Do you have ears to hear? I pray that you do. If you are listening to me today or um, with the audio version or the video, you're, you're with us. I urge you to take this very seriously. Consider what this looks like in your own life. If you have questions, uh, we are still here at First Baptist Bolingbrook. Uh, um, if there's ways that we can be praying for you, you can email prayer at firstbaptistbolingbrook.com. 
You can email me at pastor at firstbaptistbolingbrook.com. Uh, myself and our deacons would love to hear from you and understand where you are in your walk. We want to know what God is doing in your life. Maybe you have questions about what it means to be a Christian, what that looks like. How do I follow him? That is what we're here for. So to help you understand, you don't have to figure this out on your own. That we're here to, to come and uh, the Great Commission said go and make disciples and not just, disciples just don't come out of nowhere. You just don't automatically know what God has told you to do. And so that's why we have our Bible studies. We have our, our growth group. So we have our prayer time together. We have all these things so that we can grow together. We can make disciples who make disciples who make disciples. We would love to hear from you. And as always, if you are looking for a church home, even in this trying time, that believes the, the holy word of God is true and meaningful, we encourage you to, to join us at First Baptist Bolingbrook, where again, we can uh, not only hear the word, but also be doers of the word. Let's pray. My Lord, my God, create in me a clean heart and renew in us a right spirit. There's so many things that go on, even in the normal course of life, that is hard to keep our focus on things that truly matter. I know each of us has, have been uh, in these various places. We can um, understand or uh, understand where what it looks like to. To, to be in, in the path or uh, to have thorns or to be on rocky ground and where um, the, the, the seed just gets choked out even despite our, our best efforts. But Father, um, work on us. Shape us and mold us into your image. Give us the courage, the strength. Put in us the the, the want, the need, the desire to, to be just soaked into your word, to know who you are so that we might do what it is that you call us to do. That we might uh, do what it is that you've charged for us so we can continue to have a relationship with you and look forward to that day when we get to see you face to face and we get to, 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 to be uh, in the new earth, in the new heaven, and um, just be able to glorify and magnify your name where we don't have to worry about these viruses, these diseases, the, the struggles, the, 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 all the things that are, are uh, uh, wrong with this current world. You would take away every tear. You would take away all the pain. Help us to look forward to that. Help us to love one another the way you have called us to. Father, I thank you for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Won't you all stand with us as we sing our, our last song together. Thank you.
Man, that is exactly what we ought to be asking ourselves. We should be asking God to change our hearts so that we can be more like him. We, we often try to, to hold on to who we are and our individuality and all those things that make us who we are. And that's at a detriment and at a sacrifice. And we give no thought sometimes to who God created us to be. And for that, we should ask God to change our hearts, change our minds. Because that's the only thing that matters. The things that we try to hold on to in, in this world are meaningless. But what God has is meaningful. It's the only thing that matters. And God is a God who uh, seeks to know us, seeks to have a relationship with us. This is what Paul talked about. He says that he can have joy in the midst of sorrow. He knows what it means to be brought high and brought low. Some of us are low right now. But still, he can go through all those things because of who God is. But we thank you for joining us here this week. Um, uh, again, look out for our, our, our prayer uh, meeting that we'll be doing on Wednesday, uh, Bible studies to come and things of the nature. Um, continue to pick up your Bible, spend time with your family, reading through scripture through our, through our daily reading plan and enjoy one another. Let, let me pray for us as we close. Father, um, uh, I hope that you have uh, planted the seeds that need to be planted today. That we would take everything that we've, we've heard and read within your scripture and that we would take it to heart. We would take it seriously and that we would uh, hope and pray that you would use us to produce fruit. That you would use us to produce disciples. That you would give us hope in the midst of sorrow. And Father, we look to you and we thank you. We glorify your name. Amen. Thank you all. Have a good week. Right at the very end while you were praying, it said the connection was lost. <laughs>